The Sentinel got a large rework in the last patch of Last Epoch, so I rearranged my existing Void Knight to try out a lot of this new stuff. Mainly Warpath, which has heavily changed, and the completely new skill Void Cleave to complement it. This build uses both damage over time and flat damage. It's been a ton of fun, and I'm really happy with how Warpath has turned out with this change. I'm going to leave the Last Epoch Tools build down in the description, alongside a loot filter that will help you hunt for the stats that you'll need to scale with this build. If you want to know more about item stats, types, and loot filters, and stuff like that, check out my guide to items here. Right now, my Void Knight is at level 89 and has completed all 10 of the normal monoliths and is now onto the endless monoliths. The Sentinel passives make it pretty easy to stack a lot of health and resistances, becoming decently tanky without needing a lot of gear investment. And same goes for the multiple different types of damage over time that we use. None of them really require a lot of gear investment to make work as long as we're able to apply them consistently. And also the fact that one of the easiest bosses to target farm drops a lot of good items for this specific build. That low amount of gear investment for both defense and damage makes me think that this would be a really good build for beginners. The main skill is Warpath, which has been one of the heaviest hit skills with this rework changing a ton of stuff about it regarding the skill tree. It's the classic action RPG staple spin to win skill that we all know, but there are quite a few different paths that you can take with it. We convert to scaling void damage and then focus heavily into damage over time, from the time rot ailment, abyssal echoes, and some other stuff including doom and future strike. When leveling, you unlock Warpath at level 2. You won't be able to convert it to void damage with all this damage over time stuff until later, so you should scale physical damage instead. The attached item filter takes that into account until level 30. You're definitely going to want lunge while leveling. We don't have it specialized for the endgame build, but lunge is a great mobility skill that will save you a bunch of time going through the story. This is what my endgame warpath skill tree looks like. First of all, you should spend points into Unchained that makes it cost 10 less mana per tick, making it very close to free so you can spam it to your heart's content. Echo Knight gives a chance of an echo to sit and channel warpath, you need to channel for at least 2 seconds and travel for at least 4 meters for this to take effect. Next is Apocalypse Whirl that gives a flat 30% chance to apply Time Rot on hit, and converts all of your Bleed and Ignite chance over to Time Rot chance. Time Rot by default deals 45 void damage over 3 seconds, increases Thunderation by a little bit per stack, and stacks up to 12 times. We scale a lot of void damage and a lot of damage over time for this and a few other DOT effects I'll talk about in a minute. Remember that every percentage above 100% chance to apply an ailment like this gives you a chance to apply two at once, but time rot is capped at 12, so we don't need to go over a kill with this. I didn't actually take the last two points, Ma of the Deep only applies to hits and we're focusing more on damage over time, Abyssal Echoes from Abyssal Tempest is great, but we have another way to cast that skill. Letting it cast every 5 seconds while channeling just ruins my mana bar with this skill that is usually free thanks to the unchained points that we took. After that I make my way to the bottom right, starting with Quicksilver Wind that gives some speed while channeling, Gorebringer gives a little bit of bleed chance and duration, the bleed is converted to time rot chance thanks to our other point, Path of Fire will be converted to a Path of Void thanks to our other points automatically applying time rot to enemies who stand in it, which is great for making sure that packs that you're moving on from will die as soon as they chase you. It makes sure that the time rot doesn't actually decay because it will just keep resetting itself even if you're not hitting them. The remaining points were spent going into the top left of the tree starting with iron reach for AoE, whirling steel for a bit of on hit damage, and then battle master's blade for 40% more AoE. So in total, we're getting 85% increased area of effect with uh, these two points in the top left. Void Cleave is a new skill added last patch. It has some awesome skill tree points for a damage over time build like what we're doing. So I focus entirely on the bottom right portion of this tree. I've completely maxed out Fraying Strikes to reduce enemies void resistances, and then I get Resonating Cleave that casts Abyssal Echoes after using Void Cleave. Abyssal Echoes is awesome. It's another specialized skill I'll talk about more in a bit. All you need to know for now is that it deals a ton of single target burst damage. Remember that triggered skills like this will not cast if you don't have the mana. In this case, you need 39 on top of the 17 that Void Cleave costs. So we will need to get at least a little bit of maximum mana to consistently cast this. 
Ravager is the main thing that makes Void Cleave deal a ton of damage for my build. You'll know you'll now gain the Ravaging Aura whenever you use Void Cleave for a duration depending on how many enemies that you hit, up to 10 seconds. This aura deals a ton of damage over time around you. It costs 5% of your HP a second, but I have more than enough leech to deal with that. The next point, Annulling Presence, adds spell damage to Ravaging Aura and up to 100% AoE. We max this because it's a huge damage boost. Last is Endless Hunger that gives us Leech on Ravaging Aura which can help us make up for that HP cost. Volatile Reversal sends you back in time 2 seconds ago, with your old mana and your old health values intact. This is how I regenerate my mana, and why it's important that Warpath is as close to free as we can possibly get it. I only want Void Cleave to cost mana, so I can instantly restore it. First I get Time Sap that reduces the cooldown of the skill by 9% every time I kill an enemy, making it awesome for restoring mana more often as I'm clearing packs. Then I put a point in Time Lost Vitality, making its cooldown go way faster, but also making it no longer change health, which I'm fine with because I only care about mana, so I have more than enough leech to sustain health. And going back to what my health used to be 2 seconds ago often just gets me killed because sometimes I was just in a really bad position 2 seconds ago. I put a point in both Incepent and Terminal Void Rift that makes Void Rifts appear at the start and the end location when I use Reversal. Void Rifts are spells that deal a little bit of damage, they're not really good by themselves, but we get a few points here that make them amazing for debuffing the enemies to take a lot more damage. First we go to the top right, starting with Disintegration that gives Void Rifts some extra damage themselves, only spend enough points to travel to Time Rifts that makes enemies hit by Void Rifts take 60% more damage over time for 4 seconds. And now that is the big one. So then we go to the bottom left, Dark Expanse that gives the Void Rifts a lot more AoE, and then Harbinger of Dust makes enemies hit by that take 30% more damage for 4 seconds. So now we can use Volatile Reversal to not only fully regenerate our mana, but also to debuff enemies to make them take a lot more damage than they would normally. I have Abyssal Echoes specialized which gets automatically cast every time I use Void Cleave, making use of all of the skill points that I have put into its tree. This skill applies the Abyssal Decay, damage over time debuff to enemies that it hits, dealing a lot of void damage over time and then scaling incredibly hard with spell damage. The cool thing about Abyssal Decay is that if enemies take a hit while under its effect, the entire damage remaining on that DOT debuff gets dealt instantly, making this skill amazing for single target burst damage. Deep Expanse gives more AoE, I only use this for single target so I spend just enough points to travel to the next point. Vorpal Explosion, that increases the damage by 80%, but causes it to no longer chain between enemies, which is fine because once again, this is my single target skill. Screaming Rifts lets me cast this skill at a target location instead of right on top of me and also make it so it will cast 3 separate Abyssal Echoes in that same location with about a second between them. Shrieking Echoes adds 2 more casts for a total of 5. So since this skill casts 5 separate times with just one button press, you can Warpath while it's going off to get the gigantic burst of the entire DOT on the first hit, then the next one will go off and you can get the second hit in for another giant burst. This could potentially happen 5 separate times as long as the enemy stays in that same area, and usually this is enough to kill most high health things. Then I went over to the left side of the tree. Orbital Rejuvenation adds a bunch of spell damage that this skill scales with 305% effectiveness. Turbulence increases the duration of Abyssal Decay by 75%, which in turn will increase the overall damage when we hit them. Embrace the Darkness gives us the Nether Coating buff for 4 seconds after casting this that gives 20% attack speed and 100% increased damage over time, which are two stats that are really really important to us. Last I have Anomaly, a skill that sends enemies forward in time for a few seconds. It doesn't do much at first, but we get a few skill points that make the enemies take a lot more damage when they come back to the present. First you want to go for Borrow Time that makes this skill cast instantly so you are able to cast it while spinning. It costs 0 mana so all you have to worry about is its cooldown, which is 16 seconds so do use this sparingly. Then I went for 3 points in Quicksand that makes ailments tick 75% faster when enemies return. The point behind it, Cycle of Decay, pairs really well because it resets the time on all ailments when the enemy comes back. I have to spend 1 point in Void Touched even though I don't need it but I need it to get Exacerbate behind it that increases Time Rot's duration and damage. 
I asked the dev in the game chat and he said it looks like that this passive makes time rot more effective during the effects of anomaly, which is good enough for me. The mark of the rot below that makes enemies take 100% increased void damage when they come back. 1 second per point, in our case 3 seconds feels like enough. Then I put my last point into time bubble, that creates a little bubble at the target location, slowing enemies and increasing their void damage taken even more. Anomaly is your panic button skill when things get too scary, but it's also your massive single target damage skill that you can use on bosses that have already capped ailments on them, then you can watch them just die really quickly. This is the skill bar that I have been using for the end game. I don't actually have Abyssal Echo slotted in because Void Cleave automatically casts it for me. Instead, I have Lunge, not specialized, just for more mobility so I don't feel so sluggish going through the maps. With the skill tree set up like this, Warpath and Void Cleave's Ravaging Aura alone are more than enough to clear out trash mobs and even rares, but when we need some more single target damage, whether it's bosses or there's just a, a lot of extra health modifiers on your maps, we have Abyssal Echoes, which is automatically cast from Void Cleave if we have the mana. The combo for an insane amount of single target damage is Void Cleave automatically casts 5 Abyssal Echoes at the same location, Volatile Reversal to restore the mana costs, and then we just hold down Warpath, maybe Anomaly if things get too scary, but most of the time that should be enough. If you keep a close eye on your mana pool and how much mana you had 2 seconds ago, you could potentially never run out as you spam your skills as much as you'd like. But be careful with Lunge because its mana cost goes up with distance traveled and using Volatile Reversal to regain that mana will just bring you back to your original location, effectively doing nothing but wasting cooldowns. And with our passive points, we have to spend at least 20 in the Sentinel base tree before we can move on to the good stuff in the Void Knight tree. I maxed out Fearless for Vitality, Armor Clad for Armor, and then Valiant Charge for more health and cooldowns to movement skills then 2 points in the Juggernaut just so we can move on to the Void Knight tree. I started with Abyssal Endurance for some health and resist. Physical resist is really important, I have this maxed but you don't gotta max it until endgame. Travel to World Eater that gives us leech on melee and void damage. You can actually leech off of damage over times in this game so void damage leech is pretty awesome. Then I get points into Doom Knight trying to stack as much flat HP from the tree as possible and strength gives a little bit of bonus hit damage. I have 3 points in the Future Strike that gives me a 30% chance to apply this ailment that deals void damage 2 seconds later. I have another item that brings me to a total 50% chance to apply Future Strike, but I think even that is overkill because it doesn't stack. I think 30% is more than enough with our fast attack rates to be seeing this decently often. Now for the good stuff. Woe gives a buff that increases damage and armor for 4 seconds whenever I kill an enemy with melee, which happens pretty often with trash. This is a really good damage and defense boost while clearing, and it unlocks the node behind it. Singular Focus gives a whopping 100% void damage bonus. We don't use a shield, so the less block chance downside does nothing for us, it's just a huge damage boost. Eternal Form gives a ton of health in the form of Vitality that also scales our damage and then percentage health. We max this since it is such a huge defensive boost. The point behind it, Void Aegis, gives a chance on hit to get this Aegis buff that gives 10% damage reduction until you take 100 damage. I have 5 points spent in Future Mind for a flat mana and mana regen because I wanted a little bit of wiggle room when it came to sustaining mana. Remember that you need 56 mana to cast Void Cleave and Abyssal Echoes, even more if those skills do happen to Echo, so I want to try to keep my mana pool slightly above double that so I can at least leave rooms for lunges as well. Essence of the End with 4 points gives a 16% chance to get a Void Essence on kill, boosting Void damage and stacking 3 times. Echoing Strike simply gives our skills a chance to Echo 1 second later. The Echo Chance affects the Echo Knight skill from the Warpath skill tree. It's also great for Void Cleave, but remember that Echoing Void Cleave will cost extra mana, so keep an eye on that. Time Legion gives more Echo Chance, but also Attack Speed and Time Rot Chance. We max this out because Attack Speed and Echo Chance is pretty valuable to us. I don't take the final point because it actually removes Attack Speed from us, which reduced my Sheet DPS by quite a bit. It's hard to tell if 10% Echo Chance makes up for that, but I would rather just spin really fast and not worry about it. 
I did get the final point, Time Flux, that sends enemies away if I reach 20% health, making use of all of the anomalies' passives, so the enemies will start taking a bunch more void damage by the time they come back. And then there is Dread, that gives void damage and movement speed. I'm currently working on leveling this point, so it should be maxed by the time I'm level 100. This point seems pretty solid, because we want movement speed while we're channeling Warpath, right? Before we look at the items in this build, I want to mention that a lot of these items are really, really bad. I only have one single exalted item on, and it's not even a good one. You'll surely be able to find better stuff if you put in a decent amount of time farming with this. Just what I'm wearing right now is the best I've been able to find, and it has been good enough for me with starting Empowered Echoes. Instead of telling you exactly which items to put on, I'm going to tell you what stats you should be looking for and where you can get them, using some of my items as an example. First of all, I think it's really important to stack a lot of vitality, which can be put on helmets, body armor, and boots. Vitality gives a flat 10 HP per point, but it also adds damage to Void Cleave and Abyssal Echoes, making it both a defensive and offensive stat. Then you want to hunt for percentage void damage, which can be put on your weapon and all of your accessories, including your belt. The helmet slot actually has a special affix for percent void damage and flat void spell damage at the same time, which scales abyssal echoes really, really hard, so stay on the lookout for that. You'll also want percentage damage over time. Not as bad as you want void damage, but you might not be able to fit this on every single prefix, and that is fine, just go with what you have. I have plus one level of warpath on my chest piece. If you can get more levels on your affixes, then that's pretty awesome, but it's not really necessary. It is pretty rare, and it skills melee damage instead of overall damage that we would like. It doesn't affect our DOTs. My weapon is not really good. The base and the affixes are nowhere near optimal, but it's what I'm currently working with, and I'm still doing alright. I think I'd much rather percentage void damage than flat damage to scale my damage over times, and this base type plus the suffix gives us way too much chance to bleed. It's kind of overkill because I'm instantly stacking the 12 time rots and I'm not able to go further. There is a two-handed sword base type, the hollow blade, unlocked at level 77, that gives added void damage and void penetration that I would much rather have my hands on. I'll be doing a lot more damage with that, I think. My Relic is a Dread Banner that adds Void Damage and extra chance to apply Future Strike. This is pretty good, there are a few other good Relic types that the Loot Filter will show you in the endgame, most notably Tainted Effigy that gives you both flat Void Melee and Spell Damage, and remember how hard Abyssal Echo scales with Spell Damage. Then of course, there are Resistances, which can be a suffix on pretty much anything. This game doesn't require you to have capped resistances like most action RPGs do, Resists are just another really powerful defensive layer on top of armor, health, block, or whatever else you have. I try to get resist on most of my gear. It is a very noticeable change in survivability, especially since I am not using block for defense. And now for the uniques. I have two siphons of anguishes equipped that give melee slash void leech, leech rate, movement speed, and chance to apply doom and doom effectiveness. For some reason, doom is not in the game guide, so I had to search the internet to find out it's another damage over time effect that deals base 400 damage over 4 seconds and increases their melee damage taken, stacking up to 4 times. This is an incredibly powerful DOT. The base damage is much, much higher than most, but it can only stack 4 times. Siphon of Anguish is the most common drop from Ouroboros in the monolith of a boss that you'll encounter very very often, so you'll be swimming in these rings soon enough. The other unique is not target farmable, you just have to get lucky. It's Wing Guards, that gives us a lot more attack speed than we can get on any other item, and a chance to gain haste on hit, giving 20% bonus movement speed. The downside on this item is that you can no longer critically strike, but that is fine because damage over time can't crit anyways. If you don't have these, you can probably find normal rare gloves with attack speed and whatever stats you need. You'll probably deal less damage, but overall, you'll be tankier. Now let's look at the idols. Once again, these are not perfect, but the loot filter will highlight some of the idol affixes that are amazing for this build. You can't craft idols, so it's pretty hard to get a perfect one, but these affixes are still huge game changers even if they aren't paired with a decent one. My Grand Idol on top gives increased Abyssal Decay duration, which will increase the total damage, and then a chance to apply Time Rot on hit. I think I have way too much chance to apply Time Rot right now. I would much rather get another affix. 
Then two of my 4x4 adorned idols are the exact same. Increased void damage after a skill echoes, and increased damage over time. I'm really happy with these two idols, I don't think I'd want anything else. My ornate idol has increased AoE for void cleave, and more chance to apply time rot on hit. This is the first one that I would replace, it's not really doing much for us. Then my other grand idol on the bottom gives more abyssal decay duration and melee void damage. I have two small idols that give a tiny boost to damage over time and necrotic resists. And it looks like that is everything you need to know for this void knight dot spin to win build. I'll also have a text version of this guide in the description so you won't have to keep returning to this video if you choose to follow it. I'm really happy with the sentinel rework this patch, and I am really happy with this build that I have been playing around with. This is the first character that I've ever gotten to endgame with, so maybe it's not the strongest build out there, but it's been getting me by pretty nicely with some pretty awful gear. So I would definitely recommend this build to beginners who want to go through monoliths that don't have a ton of items or crafting materials saved up. I hope this video was helpful to you. Thanks for watching and getting this far into it, I hope you're enjoying Last Epoch as much as I am, and I hope you have a great day. And before I get off here, I would like to thank my members for supporting the channel and letting me sit here and make content, Mr. Fatcat, Gunner Granzen, and Man Behind the PC. Thank you so much guys.